Hello and a very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. President Pranam Mukherjee stresses on freedom of navigation as he calls on strengthening ties with Pacific Island countries, pays tribute to Indian soldiers at war memorial during visit to Papua New Guinea. Trade unions to go on a day-long protest against Finance Ministry's decision to lower EPF interest rates. Labour Minister assures he will discuss matter with Finance Minister. India asks UK to deport Vijay Malya, accused in defaulting bank loans. MEA says it will continue to pursue matter with British authorities. Prime Minister Narendra Modi invited by Speaker of US House of Representatives to address joint meeting of Congress on June 8th. White House says it is in talks with Indian officials over Modi's proposed visit. And United Nations called situation in Syria city of Aleppo catastrophic dozens killed in attacks on targets including a hospital. But on the first day of his tour of Papua New Guinea, President Pranam Mukherjee stressed on strengthening ties with the Pacific Island countries in order to achieve peace and sustainable development. The President also called out for freedom of navigation and paid tribute to Indian soldiers at a war memorial there. The two countries will sign several MOUs today before President leaves for New Zealand for his second leg of his tour. Here's more. In a first state visit by an Indian president to Papua New Guinea, President Pranam Mukherjee said that India was eager to deepen its engagement with all Pacific Island countries and stressed on the need to work as a reliable partner to achieve peace, security and sustainable development. President also called for freedom of navigation, saying sea lanes of communications should be devoid of tension and rivalry. On a busy first day, President Pranam Mukherjee held bilateral talks with Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and later spoke at a banquet hosted by the Governor-General. The President also laid floral wreath at a memorial in Port Mosby War Cemetery to pay tribute to the Indian soldiers killed during World War II in Papua New Guinea. On Friday, the two countries will sign an MOU on cooperation in health, agriculture and information technology. Later in the day, the president will leave for New Zealand on the second leg of his tour. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, trade unions are going on a day-long protest today to oppose the finance ministry's decision to ratify 8.7% EPF interest rate uh, for 2015-16. The protest is over uh, the fact that the new rate is lower than the 8.8% decided by the retirement fund body EPFO. Ten major trade unions have decided to jointly organize a protest against the centre's decision. The unions have called the move an anti-worker approach of the centre. But a day before the strike, Labour Minister Bandaru Dattatreya said that he will discuss the issue with Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. The minister assured that uh, his ministry is examining the matter and shortly they will have a sitting with the Finance Minister to find a solution. Well, the NDA government has ruled out rollback of 1% excise tax on jewellers uh, with a turnover of more than 6 crore rupees. Opposition members cutting across party lines in the upper house had urged the government to roll back the new tax imposed in this year's budget. The finance minister, however, assured the members that the government will not let any harassment take place due to the new tax proposal. Here's more. Tax aapko dena padega. लेकिन हैरेसमेंट रोकने के लिए आपको कोई और अगर सुविधा इसमें चाहिए कोई प्रिकॉशनरी स्टेप चाहिए तो हम वो भी लेने को तैयार हैं Replying to the calling attention motion in the upper house on the imposition of excise tax on gold jewelry by the union government the finance minister on Thursday declared that there is no plan to roll back the new tax proposal Earlier, members cutting across party lines had urged the government to roll back this proposal, saying it is detrimental to the interests of the artisans and workers of this industry. We want to make sure that there is no need for any kind of money, but if there is no need for any kind of money, in which there is no need for any kind of money, the artists are going to be able to do their own work, they are going to go to the wrong way. There are thousands of workers in the industry. And it is an unorganized sector. And there is a perception it uh, these measures may be turned against the interests of those workers. When you are GST, you are not going to be able to do GST. You are not going to be able to do GST. You are not going to be able to do GST. You are not going to be able to do GST. You are not going to be able to do GST. You are not going to be able to do GST. You are not going to be able to do GST. You are not going to be able to do GST. You are not going to
क्योंकि जीएसटी से उनका उत्पीड़न नहीं होने जा रहा तो फिर जब उनका एक एक्साइज ड्यूटी से है तो क्यों जिद आप पकड़े हुए हैं ये जो कौशल वर्कर हैं खास करके सोने में चांदी में उनके रोजगार को आप छीन रहे हैं या उनके रोजगार पर दहशत है और आप ये एक्साइज लगाएंगे तो ये बड़े पर नहीं लगेगी ये बड़े लोग उन्हीं से वसूल करेंगे आप जीएसटी को ला करके इसको लाइए इसकी जगह कि आप इस जो एक पूरे देश में एक दहशत का माहौल इन लोगों के बीच में हो गया है इसको समाप्त करने की आवश्यकता है Even members from the ruling party and its allies expressed their concern on the matter and urged the government to find a way out. सरकार नए ढंग से आने वाले नए नीतियों से ब्लैक मनी को निकालना ब्लैक सोना को निकालना उसकी अपनी कोई नई नीति बने परंतु यहां पर सामान्य गरीब आदमी को कोई संकट ना हो इसकी अत्यंत आवश्यकता है The finance minister clarified that the new tax proposal will not apply to small jewelers and there will be no physical verification by the authorities. और ये कुछ महीनों की बात है जिस दिन कांग्रेस पार्टी सहयोग करेगी जीएसटी बन जाएगा ये दोनों टैक्सेस उसमें मर्ज हो जाएंगे जो वैट लगाती है स्टेट और जो सेंट्रल एक्साइज होगा दोनों मर्ज होकर जीएसटी के रूप में आ जाएंगे और जीएसटी के रूप में आने के बाद हर आइटम को जैसे मैंने कहा इंक्लूडिंग लग्जरी आइटम्स उनको टैक्स देना पड़ेगा द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर आल्सो इन्फॉर्म द हाउस दैट द गवर्नमेंट हैज सेट अप अ हाई लेवल कमेटी दैट विल इंटरैक्ट विद द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स ऑफ द ज्यूलर कम्युनिटी एंड सजेस्ट वेज फॉर स्मूथ इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ द न्यू टैक्स प्रपोजल विशाल दयाज रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी Iran in a veiled criticism of the International Monetary Fund getting influenced by monetary policies of the developed world Reserve Bank chief Raghuram Rajan said that the policy innovations from emerging markets were seen by the IMF as crankiness of the governor or the government rather than based on a well thought out policy given the political and economic environment Rajan who himself has served in the past as chief economist of the International Monetary Fund said that the multilateral institution has more likely to find innovations in developed market economies as appropriate in the past also Rajan has been critical of the IMF on various issues especially about its neglect on the accommodative monetary policies adopted by the developed world since the 2008 global credit crisis Rajan was speaking in a podcast which was recorded when he was in the US to participate in the IMF World Bank spring meetings. Meanwhile, here's the latest on the Augusta Westland chopper scam controversy. The enforcement directorate is expected to issue follow-up requests on its earlier letters rogatories to at least 10 countries in connection with its money laundering probe in the 3600 crore rupees Augusta Westland VIP chopper deals case. While seven of the LRs have been already dispatched, three are being sent. The agency has obtained from the courts a total of 10 LRs to countries like Tunisia, Italy, United Kingdom, Switzerland, United Arab Emirates, Mauritius, Israel, Finland, Singapore, and Denmark in order to obtain details about the financial transactions that have taken place in the case by the accused firms and individuals named in its charge sheet filed before a court here last year. The agency is also expected to summon former Indian Air Force chief SP Tyagi for questioning in the case in the near future. He was questioned by the CBI last year. Meanwhile, the defense ministry has issued a statement asserting that the core issue in the scam was corruption and the government will leave no stone unturned in pursuing all means to bring to justice the corrupt and the wrongdoers in this case. The ministry also refuted Congress's claims that the Anglo-Italian helicopter maker Augusta Westland was blacklisted by the UPA government. It had the CBI and enforcement directorate are vigorously pursuing all aspects of the investigation including the arrest and extradition of three alleged middlemen of the deal. Meanwhile the Supreme Court will hear a petition against the Congress leaders accused in the multi-million dollar Augusta Westland chopper deals came. Uh, now while Congress leaders are uh, facing uh, the heat of the allegations political parties have also questioned uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's silence over the issue. There are also demands for a probe into the political angle. Here's more. The Supreme Court will hear a PIL seeking registration of FIR against Congress President Sonia Gandhi and former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh in the Augusta Westland chopper case next week. The government on Wednesday said it will seek a report on the deal from the CBI and initiate the move to blacklist Augusta Westland and its parent company Fin Mechanica. The center claims that the previous UPA dispensation did not ban the scandal tainted company. We have filed a petition to, and requested the court today to list the matter next week. Court is agree. It's a matter of Agastya Westland corruption helicopter case. 
The political blame game meanwhile continues among the two sides. Itna hi puchna chahta hu ki Italy ki court mein ghus dene wale jail mein hai to ghus lene wale kahan hai? Us waqt kaun shasan mein tha? Seedhi baat hai UPA ki sarkar ke jo shasan mein log the wo zimmedar hai aur un logon ne is satya ko ujagar karna chahiye. Sarasar bebunyad hai, jhoot hai aur shararat poorn hai. Dusri baat अमित शाह जी को नरेंद्र मोदी जी से कहना चाहिए प्रधानमंत्री इन दोनों अच्छे दोस्त हैं कि वो नाम सामने लाएं सरकार उनकी है कांग्रेस की सरकार ने यूपीए की सरकार ने कॉन्ट्रैक्ट को रद्द किया था ब्लैक लिस्टिंग का प्रोसेस शुरू किया था दिल्ली चीफ मिनिस्टर अरविंद केजरीवाल आल्सो जंप्ड इनटू द कंट्रोवर्सी डिमांडिंग सीबीआई रेड्स अगेंस्ट द कांग्रेस लीडर्स इन्वॉल्वड इन द स्कैम द सीपीआई आल्सो वांट अ थरो प्रोब इनटू द वीवीआईपी चॉपर स्कैम BJP has any credible evidence to accuse UPA government headed by Ms. Manmohan Singh, Defence Minister uh, Mr. Ek Antony. BJP should come forward with credible evidence. जो सरकार पिछली थी वो बदल गई है, नई सरकार है। तो जो treasury benches, ruling party के जो लोग हैं, उनसे मेरा ये कहना है कि आप जांच करिए। आप पार्लियामेंट में किस बात के लिए उठा रहे हैं? CBI had in 2013 registered a case in connection with the alleged bribes paid by the firm to Indians to clinch the deal for 12 helicopters to ferry VVIPs, including the president and the prime minister. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, let's now listen to some reactions coming in on the Augusta Westland controversy. The contract is that 40 crore rupees or 6 million euros would be given to. Uh, uh, Mr. Michel, and he will ensure that negative reporting is mitigated and, if possible, actually converted to supporting the agreement. When the UPA government got the order of the Defense Minister A.K. Antoni, he had cancelled his order, he had been paid for the money, and the Bharatiya Janta Party ने दो साल के दौरान में कुछ नहीं किया कुछ दिखाने के लिए कुछ धीरे रखो दिखाने के लिए कुछ नहीं है और अब अनावश्यक रूप से इधर उधर की बातें कर रही है well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been invited to address a joint meeting of the U.S. Congress on June 8th. The invite has been extended by the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, Modi will be in the U.S. after an invite by President Barack Obama for a bilateral visit when he was in the U.S. for the nuclear summit. Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives uh, Paul Ryan said in Washington that the friendship between the United States and India is a pillar of stability in an important region of the world. He also added that the address by Modi presents a special opportunity to hear from the elected leader of the world's most populous democracy on how our two nations can work together to promote our shared values and increase prosperity. Earlier, Prime Ministers Manmohan Singh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, P.B. Narasimha Rao and Rajiv Gandhi have addressed joint meetings of the U.S. Congress. The White House, on the other hand, said that it is in talks with the Indian officials on Prime Minister Narendra Modi's proposed visit to the U.S. The, produced, uh, the proposed visit could be the last official meeting between Modi and Obama before the U.S. President Demit's office. Time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Math phobia is developing because they don't relate to mathematics to the world around them. For, for teachers, our math teaching has to change. Uh, if a ch child has not understood, uh, we have to explain it in a different word. Need for math is felt in the much larger uh, segment. Watch Eureka with Dr. Rajiva Karandikar, Director at Chennai Mathematical Institute, only on Rajya Sabha TV. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. 
These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Welcome back. You're watching Rajasabha Television. Well, the Supreme Court has paved the way for National Eligibility Come Entrance Test or NEET to be conducted this year for admissions to medical courses both in government and private colleges across the country. The Apex Court has approved the NEET schedule for this year proposed by the Central Government, the Central Board of Secondary Education and the Medical Council of India. As per the proposal, NEET will be conducted in two phases this year. The first phase of NEET will be conducted on May 1st instead of the scheduled AIPMT and the second phase will be held on July 24th. As per the proposal, 6.5 lakh candidates can appear in the first phase of NEET while 2.5 lakh candidates can sit for this test in the second phase. A joint result will be announced on August 17th and the entire admission procedure will be completed by September 30th. The Apex Court had earlier this month paved the way for holding the NEET a single common entrance test for medical courses including MBBS, BDS and PG courses in all medical colleges when it scrapped its 2013 order to stop the single common entrance test. Meanwhile, India has asked the uh, UK to deport Vijay Malya. Malya's uh, Kingfisher Airlines has been accused of defaulting bank loans of over 9,000 crore rupees. The request of deportation has been made citing the revocation of his passport and a non-bailable warrant against him. The Ministry of External Affairs has said that it will continue to pursue Malia's deportation matter with the UK authorities. The development comes four days after the MEA revoked the liquor baron's passport. The Enforcement Directorate has approached the MEA seeking initiation of uh, deportation proceedings against Malia charged with money laundering in the 900 crore rupees IDBI loan fraud case. Malia, who had left India on March 2nd for the UK, can approach the British authorities to grant him permission to continue to stay in that country or challenge the revocation of his passport. The Ministry has written to the High Commission of the United Kingdom in Delhi requesting the deportation of Sri Vijay Malaya so that his presence can be secured for investigations against him under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. Our High Commission in the UK will also be issuing a similar note verbal to the UK Foreign and Commonwealth Office. As you are aware, Sri Vijay Malaya's passport was revoked last week in view of these investigations and the non-bailable warrant issued by the Honorable Special Judge, Mumbai. We will continue to pursue this matter with the United Kingdom authorities. Well, the External Affairs Ministry has said that it, is, it was yet to receive a request for extradition of former IPL Chairman Lalit Modi from Britain. India recently had contacted Interpol and pressed its demand for an early notification of the red warrant sought by the Enforcement Directorate against Modi in connection with its money laundering case. The ED recently got a Mumbai court's nod to begin extradition proceedings against Modi, whom it suspects to be based in the UK. Dalit Modi has been denying any wrongdoing as alleged by the ED, which claimed that the, he cheated the BCCI IPL in granting overseas telecast rights of the cricket tournament in 2009. Well, the third batch of 25 declassified files of uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose will be released today. The second set of 50 declassified files was released last month by the Culture Ministry. The last batch had 10 files each from the Prime Minister's Office and Home Ministry and 30 files from the External Affairs Ministry of the period 1956 to 2009. The Centre had earlier dismissed any political motive behind the release of the declassified files and asserted that 25 files will be released every month. The first set of 100 files was released by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in January this year. Running into over 17,000 pages, the files contained historic documents. Moving on to some international news. Now, Aleppo in Syria is left in ruins once again as the Syrian ceasefire crumbles. The upsurge in violence in and around Aleppo has strained the February truce between the government and the non-jihadist rebels. UN efforts to convene a new round of peace talks next month and channel aid to Syria's beleaguered population is still on. The ceasefire in Syria has collapsed. As the Syrian army goes on the offensive to retake the city of Aleppo, part of which is in rebel hands. About 200 people, most of them civilians, have already been killed. 
Dozens of people were killed in attacks on targets, including a hospital. Air strikes on and around the Medicine Sans frontiers backed Al Quds Hospital, killed at least 27 people, while more than 30 died in other attacks. A doctor who was the only pediatrician in the area was among those killed. It's obvious that we, we want and we need to find ways to continue supporting this, uh, these functional hospitals so they can continue supporting, uh, pro sorry, providing life-saving care in the middle of a terrible war. So we will continue looking for, the, for every possible way to support the population of Syria. What we basically see is that while people are bleeding, the health uh, workers are unable to do their work because they cannot do the work and because they are uh, attacked. I find this uh, attack reprehensible in every possible way. Um, uh, uh, we're looking at uh, dozens, or, uh, if not several dozens, uh, of casualties in this uh, strike on what was clear uh, that was a medical facility. Um, the details and the circumstances of the attack are, are still coming in, uh, but it sure bears all the hallmarks of the kinds of strikes that the regime has done in the past on treatment facilities and, frankly, on first responders. The United Nations has condemned the bombings, saying attacks that target civilians are inexcusable violations of humanitarian law. It called on the United States and Russia to help push the Syrian peace talks. The UN said that a hard-won February 27 ceasefire was now barely alive. Peace talks in Geneva have come to a halt last week as the Syrian opposition pulled out almost all of its delegates soon after the talks began. I believe that uh, calling for new round of talks during the course of May is urgent, but it's even more urgent in order to make sure that these talks are considered meaningful by the Syrian people, that the cessation of hostilities level is actually reaching back to what it used to be. No one doubted uh, the severity of the situation, and now no one is now uncertain about the consequences. So what I'm saying is that the lifeline to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that have had hopes that things would really go, get better now, that lifeline may be broken. Aleppo has been the epicenter of a military escalation that has helped to undermine UN-led peace talks in recent weeks. A cessation of hostilities agreement is coming apart and fighting has resumed on numerous fronts in Western Syria. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. More international news now. U.S. President, Vice President Joe Biden made an unannounced visit to Iraq in a sign of support for the Iraqi government as it builds on wins in its fight against Islamic State militants amid the distractions of political crisis. It is the first the time that Biden has visited the country since the United States withdrew its forces in 2011. He is the third and highest level U.S. official to visit Iraq this month. Islamic State militants, also known as ISIL, have seized large portions of Iraq and Syria since 2014. Iraqi forces have won back some of the territory, such as the provincial capital of Ramadi, but often after long battles that have left the city is destroyed. Biden's trip a couple of months in the planning is a sign of the progress the White House believes Iraqi forces have made in beating back the militant group over the past year. The trip serves uh, to counter a misperception in the region that Iran has undue influence in the nation, a senior administration official confirmed. Meanwhile, a major earthquake hit the Pacific nation of uh, Vanuatu, briefly prompting a tsunami warning that was cancelled after locals reported no significant damage. The United States Geological Survey said that the 7.0 magnitude quake struck at a relatively shallow depth of uh, 35 kilometers from the capital, Port Via. Uh, the National Tsunami Warning Center initially warned uh, the quake could generate waves of up to 3 meters on parts of uh, the Vanuatu coast. Within two hours, it had cancelled the alert, saying that uh, there was no longer a tsunami threat from this earthquake. Vanuatu is part of the Ring of Fire, a zone of tectonic activity around the Pacific that is subject to frequent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. A series of tremors have been recorded in the region this month, including a 6.9 magnitude one, also close to 
Espiritu Santo Island. No damage was uh, reported from any of them. That's it on this edition of the Breakfast News. Have a good day.